We are back this weekend talking with SAP CEO Bill McDermott. And Bill, let's talk international for a moment. You've got, what, 40% of the revenue coming from Europe. Give us a sense of the world today and where we are in this economic recovery and spending from corporations. Europe. The market is good. Europe is good. Uh, we grow in Europe in double digits. We expand the market share in Europe. And in that sense, it's not dissimilar to the United States or Asia. Companies today, they've got to grow their business. So a lot of people got caught up on the Brexit matter, but the U.K. is our fastest growing market is that in right? Europe. Wow. Yeah, because when there's change in the business model or the business process, SAP is necessary. How do we work through this? How do we navigate the change? That's a really big deal that that's your fastest grower because actually the U.K. is the laggard in Europe. Exactly. Now, Germany, in fairness, has been the most unbelievable growth market for SAP year in and year out. But France is very strong. Italy is very strong. UK is strong. But what is going on? When you think about global manufacturing, you think about supply chains, you think about tariffs, you think about CEOs thinking about their tax position, they have to be agile enough, Maria, to change their business model in real time. Mm -hmm. And what we try to do is give the CEO a digital boardroom so she can take a good look at the operations, what's going on, and how can I move things around just a little bit to advance my productivity, my margin performance, or my shareholder value. Yours is a very competitive market. And also, I was struck to hear you say, we're going after Salesforce. Yeah. We're getting the market share of Salesforce. You still trying to do that? Oh, of course. Um, of course. <laughs> I mean, you know, look, the CRM market is the largest addressable market in the business software industry. We are the market leader by the widest margin of manageable in ERP. So, why is it that SAP at this time in history would make this bold move and this proclamation that we will be the market leader and we intend to not waver or bend but take this market by storm? Because our customers want us to. Mm. They want integration. They want an integrated solution. I, I mentioned earlier you've got a, an incredibly competitive landscape. Look at these valuations right now yeah. in software and the yeah. deals. So yeah. Broadcom, CA, yeah. um, Microsoft bought GitHub for, for crazy money, and people are saying, wow, you know, what, you're spending all this money. What's your thought on the valuations right now that we're seeing out there? Well, first of all, I have to give uh, Frank Quattrone, my very good friend at Catalyst, a lot of credit for the Broadcom uh, CA deal. I thought orchestrating that was uh, pretty much a stroke of genius. So some of it is companies going into new categories. And some of it is companies in hardware businesses recognizing that it's a dead end street over time not to be in software because it's the software layer of the technology stack where the value is delivered, where the margin performance is better, and where the customers, especially the C-level customers, actually get involved in IT. So that's where you have to be, and it's not a surprise. Are you still in an acquisitive mode? Are there holes that you want to fill? We'll do tuck-ins. You know, we're not looking at anything big because we have the assets. We've been build, building the portfolio either organically or through M&A over the last nine years, like you mentioned, and we've got a, a tremendous offering right now. Is now the time with valuations where they are? That's another thing. It's very interesting you ask that question because I've seen desperate buying. If you look at some of these best of breeds and the companies they're buying, they're buying them at a 20x valuation. We don't do 20x deals. <laughs> I didn't think we don't so. do 20x deals because we don't have to. But sometimes when you're so desperate because you don't have the whole solution, you have to do something to get competitive because their growth rates in their core are starting to slip at a level that investors haven't acknowledged yet. Yeah. They haven't picked up that if you back out the M&A activity, some of these companies that are valued over $100 million are only growing at, at like single, uh, single digits or even mid-double digits. It's a really and it doesn't point. justify the 40x multiples on this stock. You raised your guidance for 2018. What do you see on the horizon that's going to be uh, sort of the catalyst there? The cloud. Um, you know, and when I say the cloud, um, one of the points I was making earlier, we have good partners that are hyperscale cloud providers like Microsoft, like Amazon, uh, like Google, 
um, like IBM and others, where and Dell, where we partner with these companies and they provide a very important service mm. um, in their clouds. But our software, our reference architecture, can run in any of their clouds. So if that's what's good for our customer, that's where we'll run it. Yeah. What our customer wants is the best software in the world because the best run SAP, and that's what we give them. That's terrific. Bill, it was a great quarter. Uh, we're going to be watching the developments. Thanks very much. Congratulations on your 10-year tenure. And congratulations to all your success, uh, Maria. Thank you so, so much. So happy for you. And to you.